Hello scholars, this is Miss Jurius from Trivium East Athenaeum. I hope you guys had a good week. I know I did. And so today's lesson we are going to be talking about a Finnish tale of humility. Um, and so this is going to be a short story that we are going to read from a country called Finland. So we see Finland. It is located in a northern European part of the country near Norway and Sweden. In Athenaeum you know, a lot of virtue. There's a new virtue every month. And one of them being is humility. So as I read this story to you guys, I want you to think about who in the story showed humility and how it is rewarded later in the story. Okay? All right, here we go. The Princess Mouse. Once there were two brothers who were sons of a farmer. As they grew, it was time for them to marry. Their father said, Boys, you have come of age and it is time for each of you to find a wife. In our family, we have our own way of choosing a bride. The younger son, Miko, listened with honor and respect to his father's request. The older son haughtily replied, I know, father, you've told us before. We we must cut a tree down and the way it lands is the direction in where we find our bride. The father nodded and told them they must walk in the direction that the tree pointed until they found a sweetheart. That was the tradition they would follow. The older son already had a sweetheart and also knew how to cut a tree to make it fall in the direction he wanted. That was his plan. The brothers went to cut their trees. Miko did not have a sweetheart, so he thought he would try to cut a tree and aim it into town. However, when he cut the tree, it did not land pointing towards the town, but towards the forest. His older brother laughed and teased him. Oh, Miko, maybe you will find a fox or a bear to marry. Miko ignored his brother's jest and went walking in the direction his tree pointed. Miko walked and walked. He walked for hours through the forest, not finding a single soul. Just as he was about to give up, he saw a little cottage. He went into the cottage, hoping to find his sweetheart. To his disappointment, there was no one in the cabin. The cabin had been deserted. As he turned to leave, Miko said, I guess this was a waste of my time. Suddenly, he heard a small voice say, Maybe not. He turned back again to see who spoke. On the old table was a little furry mouse. Did you say something? He asked the mouse. The mouse replied, Why don't you tell me your name and what you came looking for? Miko, a respectful young man, felt the polite thing to do to answer, even if it was a little mouse talking. He said, my name is Miko, and I came looking for my sweetheart. I'll be your sweetheart, said the little mouse. But you're only a mouse, said Miko. Mice can still be special, and I can still love you faithfully, Miko. Come feel my soft fur, replied the mouse. Miko felt her fur with one finger, and it felt like velvet. She sang to him while he pet her fur. Miko had found no one else, and she was a wonderful little mouse. All right, he said. You can be my sweetheart. You won't be sorry, said the little mouse. Miko wasn't sure about that, but he kept stroking her velvet fur and smiled. Miko returned home to his brother and father. His brother was proudly boasting of a sweetheart with golden hair and rosy cheeks. When Miko came in the door, his brother, observing Miko, did not bring home a sweetheart. So he began to laugh at him and ask, <laughs> And where is your sweetheart, Miko? Did you find one with a nice fur coat? Miko didn't want to admit his sweetheart was a mouse. So he just told them his sweetheart has a coat of velvet like a princess. His brother stopped laughing. The father then told the boys they would need to ask their sweetheart to weave a cloth to test their skills. The next morning, Miko went back to the cabin. The mouse saw him and squealed. 
Miko, is today the day of our wedding? Sadly, Miko said, yes, but how am I to take a mouse home to marry? Everyone will laugh at me. The mouse responded, you're right, Miko. Everyone will laugh, but that doesn't matter. What do you think? Miko thought how the mouse loved him and cared for him. He responded, let them laugh. You are a fine sweetheart. The mouse clapped her little paws and four rats came out, pulling a nutshell like a carriage. Miko placed his sweetheart in the carriage as though she were a queen. Off ran the rats as the mouse sang of her happiness. Miko ran after them to catch up. He was filled with excitement over his upcoming marriage for. Even though he knew he would be mocked for his choice, the little mouse would be a good, kind wife to him, and he respected her for her virtue. They arrived at the spot near the river where the brothers were to have their weddings. As the mouse pulled up to the spot, Miko's brothers saw them. He was outraged. He swiftly kicked the rats and mouse into the river. What have you done to my sweetheart? yelled Miko, distraught as he watched the carriage disappear. Are you crazy? It was a mouse, yelled his brother. You have killed her. She really was my sweetheart and I loved her. Miko went to attack his brother, but the shouts of his father stopped him. Miko, look. Everyone turned and looked down the river as four black horses in a carriage emerged from the water. The people gasped in astonishment as the horses rode up to the spot where Miko was. A beautiful princess opened the door of the carriage and said, Miko, aren't you going to help me down? Miko was stunned. Were you the little mouse? Smiling, the princess said, I was. An evil witch had cast a spell on me, and the only way it could be broken was to have one brother that wanted to marry me and one brother that wanted to kill me. Miko's father gave them a grand wedding. When Miko and his princess bride returned to the cabin in the woods, it was no longer a cabin but a castle of hundreds of servants. Later, when Miko and the princess had sons, can you guess how they chose their brides? So that concludes our little story time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A story from Finland. Um, I do want to ask a couple of questions, just one or two. Just, you know, just to see what we learned, right? So the first question is, what do you guys think the opposite of humility is? Hmm. I think it's called pride, right? Can you guys guess which character in the story was prideful? I think it's pretty obvious, right? Not Miko, definitely not. His brother, he was very boastful. He showed off that he had a sweetheart while Miko didn't, right? And with Miko, he was willing to put aside his pride to do the right thing and so he refused to be offended and was like nope i don't care if you teased or laughed at me i'm gonna honor my father's instructions and with that right because miko had humility he was rewarded with a gift of a beautiful princess to share his life with and they got married and had children later on. And so, bye guys.